get into your basement if you have a basement. Be on the lowest level of your house if you don't have a basement. If you uh, live in a top floor apartment and you still have a second or two, if you know somebody downstairs, see if they're there. If not, get into your safe spot, a bathroom. All right, I want you in a bathroom, in a bathtub. Feel free to cover yourself up with some towels, with some pillows, whatever the case may be. I want you in a safe spot. If you live in Bonner Springs, this is a large, life-threatening tornado moving right along K32, okay, and heading towards the Bonner Springs area. Our timeline on this is Bonner Springs within the next minute to five minutes, okay? The Turner area by 716. Now we're moving the into the Wyandotte County area, and if this thing stays on the ground, all right, this is going to now move into more of the heart of Kansas City. And in the strangest of coincidences, all right, very close to the track that the tornado took back in 2003. That's going to involve parts of Platte County if it stays on the ground. Okay, it's been on the ground now for roughly, I want to say, uh, Carla, can you help me out with that? How, how long do we think this has been on the ground? At least 45 minutes? At least 45 minutes. Because and it's, Lawrence. Yeah. Okay, here DeSoto. we go. Here's another vantage point of it. Okay. It started just south of Lawrence, just outside by Wakarusa, is when we started getting confirmed. Actually, it was Lone Star, Kansas, yeah. when we got confirmed reports. Maybe we can go figure out how far yeah, of a yeah, distance I that, that is. Uh, I was, uh, while you're doing that, yeah, I was going to mention, that really um, as it gets closer to Bonner Springs, I don't believe there's, there's not a concert sandstone tonight, so that's good. But also, you have uh, the Speedway and Sporting KC, but... Also, the Legends, you know, that's an, that's an outdoor mall for the most part. You know, people are walking around. So if you know somebody in that area, that's definitely one spot you'd want to make a phone call to make, have them go the other direction and take cover because uh, that's going to be a difficult spot as we still continue to see. Uh, do you have anything, uh, updates, Carly, from the chat? I don't have my computers uh, closed. Let's see right here. Uh, we're getting reports of uh, t -t 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 moving still, north. It's still, still, on the ground. it's still on the ground. Confirmed large and destructive yeah. tornado on the ground near Bonner So this Springs. is still on the ground as you switch that. And you can actually see that specifically. We talked about this correlation coefficient, but that's the debris that's being picked up by the radar. That's just a different one of our radar products here. And so that's in Bonner Springs. And as we get closer, as we continue to get these updates, uh, large tornado reaching the Northland as well. Uh, Weatherby Lake, Parkville, at least keep that in your mind as this has been on the, the, the ground for some time, uh, moving from Bonner Springs into the metro area, especially in the Northland. So, yeah. uh, it's been on the ground for about 30 miles now kay. since it started just outside of Lone Star. Joe Loria is now showing us the spot that we're watching for debris as the town of Bonner Springs takes a direct hit. And we're going to be talking about, uh, let's get some more tracks. Joe, people in the path of this tornado need to know exactly where there are where the time estimated time and if you're watching right now and you hear the sirens get into your basement this is a large destructive confirmed tornado on the ground at times we've had reports that it might be a half mile wide if not larger it is a destructive confirmed tornado on the ground this means business gary you've been showing us the debris that's now getting closer to the 435 and 70 interchange and it is going to continue to move up into the heart of the metro in assuming it maintains its strength well on the and ground. i'd say that the, the big thing the big takeaway is we've been watching this on radar is if if you're in that area that's not the only spot that's had damage no. i mean we looked at lawrence and that was three four miles north i mean a lot of this is and what did we mention was that tonganoxy that got uh, those areas with the debris that was flying yeah. up about yeah. five six miles away from the center of that and so i think that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing to note is even if you're north uh you're still going to be in the path of at least some wind damage possibly as we okay. continue to, to see that move off. Uh, yep. Andy Bailey who works for the National Weather Service just sent a thing out and he goes please guys this is a life threatening situation we need to get you into your safe spot this is the biggest of biggest deals guys this is a large destructive tornado on the ground it is creating significant damage <laughs> catastrophic damage in some spots where it has passed through. It is moving right now, right on top of I-70. There is a tornado warning that has now been extended now into portions of Wyandotte County until 715. It stops right at the Missouri River. I suspect, because this has not weakened at all, I suspect that this warning will likely be extended at some point, but this is a confirmed tornado, a history of turning semis over, turning cars over. We've seen massive structural damage in and around Lawrence. 
in and around Linwood. We heard from meteorologist Michelle Bogowith, who said Linwood was just inundated with damage. She saw significant damage in Linwood. This is the tornado, guys, and it's going to continue to lift off to the north and east at about 30 miles per hour. So again, if you're in Johnson County, on the extreme north side of Johnson County, near the uh, I-70 interchange, also in Leavenworth County and Wyandotte counties, this is the spot that we're really concerned. This is um, maybe we can refresh that. Gary, there we go. This is the spot right now, I-70, near the interchange of K-7 and I-70, near Kansas Avenue, near 138th Street, just to the north of Bonner Springs. If you're near the Speedway, if you're near uh, State Avenue, Parallel Parkway, we're talking about a tornado moving right in your ro uh, location. This is K-7 and I-70 right now that's going to be dealing with this tornado. What's that? KCI is now putting people down underground in the tunnels. And uh, those uh, cities in the path of this include the Legends, include the Speedway. Kansas City, assuming this holds together, it moves in around 724. Turner, 717. These are the cities on the Kansas side and Wyandotte County also in the Missouri side now that we're warning about because this tornado is not weakening. It has not shown signs of weakening. This is a tornado emergency. This is not a radar indicated. This is, I don't care about your pictures. I don't care about your videos. Get into your basement. Joe. All right, so if you live south and east of I-35 in Johnson County, if you live south and east of I-35, well, let me just say Johnson County for now. Johnson County on the Kansas side, okay. So you are not going to be directly affected by this massive tornado that is on the ground in the Bonner Springs area. However, if you live in this cone, okay, especially in this cone, that would include Turner, the Argentine District, uh, KCK, KC Mo, Gladstone by about 734, and if it holds together, and this is a long ways down the road, uh, but Sugar Creek by 741, this is the area that we're most concerned about. This now brings Southern Platte County, Parkville, Gladstone, all into play as far as this particular destructive tornado goes. It brings Wyandotte County into play as well, very much so, especially around the Bonner Springs area. And again, as I've been trying to emphasize to you, this is not one of our typical uh, little baby spin-ups that touch down for a minute and then go right back up into the air. That's not the case with this. This is what you envision when we show you those videos from Oklahoma. That's the size of this particular tornado. Half a mile wide, could be even longer, or larger, I should say, wider, if you will. Okay, and we're getting reports from spotters that this thing is still so wrapped up within the rain that it's very, very difficult to actually go ahead and get an absolute pinpoint location on it. We're relying on damage showing up on radar. Carla. Um, we're getting from another emergency manager coming in from Wyandotte County that spotters have a confirmed tornado on the ground. State Avenue and 123rd Street. State Avenue and 123rd, they are estimating the width of this tornado to be about three quarters of a mile wide. So here's State Avenue. There's you can see State Avenue. You can see 123rd Street. And there we are we go. gonna continue to track this very, very right close now to State Avenue. This is just to the north of I-70. Just to the north of I-70. This is so close to the Speedway. This is close to the Legends. This is just to the south of Parallel Parkway. I-70 over towards the Legends, over towards the Speedway, over towards the Casino. Up by KCI, we even know that they're getting people down into the tunnels, even though the tornado is not there yet. Let's go ahead and put a path on it, guys, because Sorry, uh, I'm just getting, uh, I'm just getting yeah. my bearings where 123rd and State yep. Avenue is before we yeah, take a look at that. That's where we have confirmation, and you yeah. can see the, so, the couplet there on radar. Because obviously this is where we talk about uh, being very important for uh, your ground spotting because we can't tell specifically right. where this is at, you know. And so it's ahead of the scan. So that's why it's very helpful when people let us know. But that's where it's at. Right. It's going to be crossing over I-70 very, very soon. Okay. You can see it just out south of I-70 approaching State Avenue, so approaching okay. the Speedway. That's where the tornado warning is. It continues until 715. We haven't gotten an additional extensions of the tornado warning just yet, but we want to put a track for the cities in the path of this because it's racing off to the north and east. Okay, scout camera full right now. This is near... I-70 and 110th Street, this is on the Kansas side, of that warning of that tornado. This would be very near where it would be crossing I-70. I Look at all the storm chasers there. I hate to see vehicles on the road. Thankfully, the highway is fairly empty, 
I don't know if that's because they've shut it down in some spots or if people are just heeding the warnings, but this is a tornado emergency. There is a tornado on the ground, potentially a quarter to three quarters of a mile wide is what we're getting some estimates from our storm spotters out in the field. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, it, I just looked at a couple radar scans. It didn't look quite as impressive, but this is possibly a storm that is just cycling, guys. There's, so I wanna go ahead, Gary, let's throw radar back up. Let's put a track on this because Joe, there, there are a bunch of big cities, in addition to what's already been impacted by this tornado, more in the path. All right, so this is getting now very, very close uh, to the Legends area. Here's I-70, here's 435. Okay, there's State Avenue, and this is out towards Children's Mercy Park, the Legends area, the Speedway area. I mean, it is amazing, right? 2003, same spot. I mean, the same spot, just crazy. And, and for those of you on the north side of Kansas City, I know you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, 2003, my house was destroyed. People were injured, okay? So I want you folks up in Platte County, please, please, please get ready to immediately take shelter and to get into your safe spot. Tornado warning is not in effect yet for Platte County, but it's probably coming, all right? And when Carly mentioned that the tornado, the supercell. Oh, look at that, Joe. Okay. Look Let's at that. go ahead and check in now take with 435. Full. I'm going to scoot out of the way real quick. You can go ahead and take that full. Yeah, take that uh, full. This is um, right along. Yeah. 435 out towards state. So you can see some folks are stopping and, and pulling off towards the side. And again, we still have indications that a tornado is on the ground with this. Um, I don't want to let our guard down at this point. Okay, this is going to pass very close to Piper, Maywood, obviously the Bonner Springs area, uh, Pomeroy, Walcott. These are all communities. Weatherby Lake. Okay, Weatherby Lake, get ready. All right, get ready, Weatherby Lake. Gladstone, okay, near yeah, the Riverside issued, area. They just okay. issued tornado warning. Did for they the just metro. issue for Platte County? Uh, they issued for Clay, Jackson, and, Jackson and, and Platte, Platte County. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Johnson, Wyandotte, Clay, Jackson, I mean, Platte County. The left side is the tornado that we're looking at on our screen right okay. now. Okay, parts of it still on the ground. Uh, this is, or actually, parts of those counties are under a tornado warning. This is going to go until 8 o'clock. And at 7.09, confirming a large, extremely dangerous tornado, very close, if not over, the community of Edwardsville. This is moving off towards the east-northeast, roughly 30 miles an hour. And again, more spotter reports that this thing is entirely wrapped up in rain, okay, uh, which is, uh, it looks like the worst of the circulation passed towards the south of Kansas Speedway, okay, According to one spotter who is at the Kansas Speedway area, so Legends, Kansas Speedway, uh, Children's Mercy Park, looks like this tornado passed just towards the south of those three icons, if you will, in the Kansas City metropolitan area. Now that we have Platte County involved in this and Clay County involved in this, this is probably now turning into perhaps uh, one of the biggest tornado situations that we've seen here in Kansas City. Uh, since 2003, since that devastating tornado on the north side of the metro. You all remember that very, very clearly. Okay, getting reports now of severe damage in Leavenworth County out towards 206th Street and K32. That K32 corridor uh, was not in a good mm -hmm. spot. No. Okay, and we were watching this tornado uh, essentially go along K32. My goodness gracious, this radar presentation is about as scary as it could possibly be from a meteorological standpoint. All right, I'm looking cycling. at things that you typically see down towards Oklahoma. All right, and this is what exactly is now unfolding before our very eyes here in Kansas City. The rotation is going to be very close, maybe just towards the northeast of Edwardsville. This would be K32. Here is I-70. This would be 635. I mean, my goodness gracious, how much more into the metro can we get? This is going to be heading off towards the east, nor actually northeast, maybe even a little bit east-northeast. So if you live really in the northern part of Wyandotte County, within maybe a couple of miles of I-70, okay, especially if you live up towards State Avenue, if you know anybody in State Avenue, along State Avenue, make sure they are aware of this deadly tornado. This could actually kill people, and I hate saying that, uh, but that's the power of this tornado, especially if they're not in a safe spot. If you get in a safe spot, 
probably going to be okay. But this is a very, very concerning situation. And again, here's the Legends area. Here's 435, and here is K32. So the circulation is somewhere maybe just towards the south of the Legends, right near, if not just towards the southeast of 435, and just towards the south of 470. This would be on the west side of Kansas City, Kansas, out towards the Legends area. And this is a tornado that we still believe is on the ground according to spotters. Now, they're having a tough time with this one because it is so wrapped up in rain. And those are uh, really the toughest things to spot uh, when we try to kind of give you a little bit of perspective. In other words, when you take a look at that picture that you see to my right, somewhere in there, in that rain shack, is the tornado, okay? And we think it could be anywhere from a quarter of a mile wide to maybe half a mile wide to maybe something even bigger than that. And we've seen destruction in the Lawrence area and in the Linwood area that would suggest to me we are looking at a very significant mm -hmm. tornado, not like what happened on Friday night when we had those quick little things that kind of came down and popped <coughs> right back up again. Uh, but we are looking at a destructive tornado now moving into parts of Wyandotte County. Let's get over to Carly. All right, Joe, so right now as we look at our velocity scans, which kind of show where there may be some rotation together, there, it's not as impressive, but they're concerned that this storm is cycling right now, and so that's why they have extended the warning. So I want to throw it back over to radar and show you from that perspective where we're watching this tornado warning right now, and it does include those of you in portions of Leavenworth and Wyandotte counties, but it has been expanded now to include those of you up upstream from this. This goes for those of you in Platte County. We're hearing the sirens here in Jackson County. We're at the station. We're also hearing the sirens up towards uh, the town of Parkville and Riverside, Clay County, Jackson County, Johnson County, Wyandotte County is all included in this tornado warning until 715. Uh, you'll have to let me know, Rob, whose video we're seeing on the side of our screen here. I believe this is Michelle's or maybe it's one of our other chasers that are out right now. Is it Michelle's? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep, okay, it is Michelle. So Riverside, the sirens are going off. I think I could hear the sirens. I can hear them the outside station. here. Yeah, I just checked though. We're not in the path of the tornado, but we are keeping a very close eye on the circulation. Okay, at Nebraska Furniture Mart, everybody has gone into the basement at the Legends. Um, so within the 435 loop right now, we're keeping a very close eye on potentially another tornado getting dropped. So maybe we can expand the view just a little bit, Gary, so we yeah, can show sure. all of the areas under the tornado warning. This does include Wyandotte County. This does include southern portions of Platte County. This includes parts of downtown Kansas City, including right here at the station under a tornado warning, although the worst of it is going to be right in the middle of that warned area where we're keeping an eye on the rotation. So we're going to put a track on this. I'm going to start it from right here, just in Wyandotte County and I'm gonna move it off to the north and east at about 30 miles per hour. This is gonna move eerily similar to the track of that 2003 tornado that moved through the legends and crossed over the Northland. So see this little notch right here, right in just to the south of Parkville? That is concerning to me because that may be a spot where there's location. This is gonna be moving over Leavenworth Road, moving near State Avenue. It's going to be lifting over Missouri 9. It's going to be moving right on top of the town of Parkville right on top of Riverside, if you're near Horizons Parkway, if you're in downtown Parkville, get into your safe spot. This is a tornado that has a history of destructive damage. It is not confirmed at the moment because the circulation looks a little bit more ragged, but I want you, if you are in Parkville, if you live in downtown Parkville, along Missouri 9, all the way over to Riverside, if you're in Houston Lake, if you're in Weatherby Lake, this is your time to get into your safe spot. This means business. Get down there. There is a history of a tornado on the ground with this storm, and it is a rain wrap tornado. So until it gets right up on you, you're not going to see it. Let's put a path on it. Those towns in the path of this Parkville 721. It is 717. Get into your safe spot. If you're at Houston Lake 726, it's going to be moving over Missouri 9, moving near the town of Riverside, moving near the town of Parkville, moving over the Fairfax district near the river there. It's going to be moving over 38th Street. It'll be moving over the river, moving out of Wyandotte County into Platte counties. And we're going to continue to track this. Right now, I'm not getting any confirmed reports. <sighs> oh, actually, I am. I take that back. It's back on the ground near Maywood, three miles southwest of Maywood in Wyandotte County. And it's going to be a small town in Maywood. 
and it's going to be uh, basically very near Bonner Springs in Interstate 70. That's from the Wyandotte County spotters. It's crossing over the river into Parkville, into Riverside. If you are right now near 635 in Fairfax, if you're right now along Horizons Parkway, there's a lot of industrial buildings right there, Missouri 9. There's some homes right there. Park Hill South is near there, downtown Parkville. You are now going to be in the path of this Montebello. If you're in that subdivision, Wrist Lake, if you're in that subdivision, get into your safe spot. This is a confirmed tornado on the ground in Wyandotte County that is going to be crossing over the river. If you're watching right now, take your phone with you. We'll live stream on Facebook, our weather app, as well as Fox or KC. Joe, do you have some new information? Okay, so uh, again, just to kind of broaden our view for just a split second on this, because I know so many of you uh, might be hearing the sirens, but it's really just a, a very focused area where this potentially bad tornado may still be on the ground. Still maybe a little bit of a question mark about that. Uh, but again, if you live out here, and I hope you're looking at your Facebook live stream or your television, if you live out here, if you live down here, if you live up there, up towards northeast Kansas, and if you live up towards far northern Missouri, all right, this is just a very small area, and unfortunately, it is right into the heart of Kansas City. And I wanted to kind of highlight that for you by showing you radar. And again, this is the tornado warning that's in effect for Wyandotte County, for parts of southern Platte County, southwestern Clay County, the northwestern portion of Jackson County. This does, repeat does, include downtown Kansas City. That's why so many of you, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are hearing the sirens right now around the heart of Kansas City through the downtown area. Now, if everything works out, in a sense, okay, up towards KCI, this is going to pass south of KCI. This will probably pass south. I mean, we're close, but probably pass south of 152, all right, probably south of Barry Road, okay, and it looks like it's going to be north of I-70. So, you know, for Johnson County, okay, I think we're looking a little bit better right now. For the far, far, far southern part of Wyandotte County, I think we're looking a little bit better right now. But the main concern is into Platte County and southwestern Clay County, and essentially from Bonner Springs east northeastward, if you will. And notice, all right, so this is the show in town. This is it right there, at least for now. Hopefully, for now, uh, this is it. But again, there's still circulation. You can kind of see it right in through there, no doubt about that, right near the Parkville area. And as a result, we still have this tornado warning that's in effect through about 8 o'clock or so. Uh, okay, let me jump in here with John. Uh, sounding in Riverside, so they're okay. aware of that path they, as well. Uh, Joe, they have a confirmed tornado on the ground located near K Kansas City, and I'm assuming this is on the Kansas side or near Lake Quivira, moving east, northeast at 35 miles per hour. So maybe if we zoom out just a little bit, just so we can get a little bit broader perspective here, this will be a little bit easier to put a path in. So it's gonna be in and around right here, just across the river, just across from Parkville. And it's moving off to the north and east, north and east at about uh, 35 miles per hour. So Houston Lake, 723, Parkville, Riverside, it's moving in as we speak. I hope you're in your safe spot. Um, it's moving oh, east at 35, excuse me, thank you for that. We're looking, by the way, our split screen is downtown, it's our own tower cam, right? Looking off to the north, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. But the area is uh, near Briarcliff, this is gonna be moving in over downtown Parkville as we speak. It's gonna be moving over 635 in just a few minutes. There is a confirmed tornado moving out of Kansas City near Lake Quivira, moving east at 35 miles per hour. So I hope you're in your safe spot. If you're in Houston Lake, it's going to be moving in in the next few minutes. In Briarcliff, it's gonna be moving in in the next few minutes. Putting a track on the north side of downtown Kansas City, it's gonna be impacting areas just north of the heart of downtown as it races off to the east now. It's turned a little bit. It was moving northeast. Now it's moving more east at about 35 miles per hour. So it's gonna be there in a mere matter of minutes. It's moving potentially right on top of Parkville right now, moving right on top, top of Lake Quivira, crossing over into Riverside, Houston Lake, and it's going to be moving through North Kansas City. It's going to be moving through Gladstone or very near Gladstone. So if you're in Gladstone, take cover right now. Uh, we're continuing this tornado warning until seven uh, or until eight o'clock, excuse me. For those of you in Clay, Jackson, 
Platte County on the Missouri side and Wyandotte County on the Kansas side because there's still a confirmed tornado on the ground. Joe. All right, so just to kind of bring everything sort of kind of home in a sense, uh, this is the area and we've got a lot of stuff happening here. And I should really probably take off these severe thunderstorm warnings because in all honesty, uh, that's not important right now. 60 mile an hour winds, we could deal with that. Uh, the circulation, we believe, is going to be somewhere right in through here. There was a report of maybe a tornado out towards Lake Quivera just a little while ago. Uh, so all of this activity, thank you, Gary, by the way, um, this is all moving off towards the east-northeast. So uh, basically, here's 152. All right, let's keep an eye on this 152 corridor, uh, especially, you know, from Zona Rosa southward, at least for a little while, uh, because you can kind of see... There's that, and then there's this, all right, that uh, is kind of tough to pinpoint exactly where this tornadic circulation actually is, because in all honesty, um, it right might be on top of Parkville, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that would actually be technically just out of the box. So that's why I'm, I'm questioning things just a little bit as far as that goes. This could be something right in through there. Um, we're taking a look now at our tower cam. I'm going to scooch out of the way uh, for just a second just to kind of give you a better vantage point so I could get close to the television. Uh, we're looking off towards the northwest from our tower cam here at the station and uh, tough to make out aside from the rain that you see over on the far right hand side, uh, tough to make out anything that actually may be on the ground, which is uh, certainly a good thing. I don't know, do we wanna check in with Michelle and Jerry and uh, kind of see how they're doing right now? Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, at least pull up Jerry's pictures. Uh, Jerry is driving. Uh, he's on K7. He just made a turn. I'm not exactly totally sure where he is, um, but he's along, uh, just now going northbound, I assume. Take my voice. Along K7. Here's Michelle. Michelle, take it. Hey, Joe. Okay, so we um, just got off 7. We are getting on I-70 right now, headed back into the heart of downtown where the tornado warning is ongoing currently on the north side up around the Parkville area, just south of Weatherby Lake that you guys have been talking about. Just to kind of bring everyone up to speed, we started tracking these, these storms that were blowing up down around the Eudora area. And Jerry and I, Jerry's done an amazing job kind of tracking and working our way through a lot of debris. We drove through Eudora, powers completely out. As we made our way up to Linwood, Linwood took a direct hit. We saw an all brick home in a pile of rubble. Um, I know that we have called emergency managers and crews to head in that direction to check on, po on people and whatnot um, to make sure that everyone is okay because this is a very large destructive tornado and we've already seen firsthand the damage that it is doing. So what we're going to be doing right now, just so you guys are kind of aware of where we're going to be going with our live shot, we are traveling now east on I-70, headed into downtown Kansas City. Because the tornado has been moving only 35 miles per hour, I believe that you guys said, we're going to do our best to take a northerly route once we get a little closer into downtown. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys. Joe, Carly? Okay. okay. Uh, let's, I think Gary's got well, something. I was just going to say, I mean, we're, we're looking at specifically, and I just want to talk about how, uh, you know, obviously I can put tracks on these, but it, we're kind of from the Northland, so we can kind of look a little bit better. I mean, this is crossing. That's where it is in Parkville, right, 45 and 9, and that's the intersection, uh, I would say, right next to the QT. Uh, you're the looking there chopper. and the price chopper yeah. that's just a little bit further down the road this is working its way up st Therese is up here a little bit more so i would say working your way toward obviously lake wacomas and platte mm -hmm. woods mm -hmm. that's an area uh, that we're looking at here within the next two to three minutes really yeah and the broadest circulation looks like it's just north of 45 highway near missouri 9 intersection so that would have just missed downtown parkville mm -hmm. moving just to the north of those around that vicinity. So putting a track on it, Lake Wacomas, you're in the path of this tornado warning, or actually you're just outside of the tornado right. warning. It's interesting to us, yes. we were just talking, that's where they have a severe thunderstorm warning mm. at the moment. No eyes on a tornado, but the problem is it's rain wrapped if there is anything. And so we're gonna keep an eye on Lake Wacomas, 
Liberty, Kearney, but we also don't want to forget our neighbors inside of the uh, tornado yeah. warning down towards Riverside. Yeah, I was going to say, can you put uh, Weather 2 back up so we can get at least to street level just briefly yeah. so we can talk about some of those areas in the Northland, at least. Uh, right along Prairie View Road, and I mean, this is going to potentially cross 29 Highway real shortly. Um, you're past Exit 5 here at Houston Lake. But that's going to work its way closer to the Berry Road exit, I would say. At least the, the broad circulation is right when you get that 635 mm -hmm. to 29 coming from 169. That's going to get closer to that Houston Lake exit and all the way to the Berry Road exit, I would expect, before you get to that 152 right. interchange. And I would say that's probably within the next three to five minutes yeah. is what you're looking at. So you're looking at 733 as that potentially crosses the the interstate there, right on Roan Ridge, that's, that's essentially Platwood. right along Platte Woods yeah, that takes Platwood. the back edge to the coves, and then you're going to hit 152 here within the next 10 minutes. So if you're along 152, I would expect, and 152 and 169, I mean, really in that triangle, that's where we want at least see people to go inside within the next five to 10 minutes. And I'm getting reports, um, for what it's worth, uh, my house is right underneath yeah, this tornado warning right me. now. <laughs> and my husband just texted me and said that they had quite a bit of wind at first, but it appears that things are okay there in and around the Parkville area. I've gotten reports from another person, my neighbor actually said they think it's pretty good. Uh, the winds have gone a lot calmer here in the last couple of minutes although the circulation is still very near there, so we don't want to forget just yet everybody inside of this uh, tornado warning, but to hear confirm reports near the, or from people underneath that tornado warning at the moment where the circulation is uh, certainly some encouraging news, Joe. Yeah, so uh, my suspicion would be that if there was a tornado actually on the ground, right. we would be getting some ground truth right, right. now. So. Uh, that's a step in the right direction. Now, this could be just a thing where the storm might be what we call cycling, where it's trying to reorganize uh, sort of like it did after it got out of the Linwood area. Uh, but that's at least a, a step for the good, okay? But I, by the same token, don't want you folks in Platte County or Clay County to let down your guard about this because this thing could again all of a sudden quickly increase in strength or reorganization, I should say, and produce a tornado. So right now, at least according to our connections with our colleagues at the National Weather Service and all the various spotters that are out there keeping an eye on things, and especially now that this thing is in a very heavily pop populated area, you would think that you would get some ground truth. So I want you folks over towards Ectonville, Kearney, let's start paying attention to this, Kearney. Holt as well, 812, if it stays or if the storm continues to be tornadic. I won't say if it stays on the ground because indications are right now that it may not be on the ground anymore. This was a long track supercell, a long track tornado that went through various parts of our community. Lawrence, Linwood, um, Bonner, Springs. Bonner Springs especially. Okay, so now we're taking a look down towards the downtown airport. And just a couple of things. Notice we've got a little bit of what appears to be sunshine out there in the area. So that's kind of getting things unstable again, despite the fact that it's about 7.30 or so. Uh, whatever is out there is going to be off into the distance uh, from this particular perspective. All right. And again, we're not seeing signs, at least right this second, of the tight core that we've seen over the last about hour and a half, it seems like an hour and a half or so, uh, when we first started to give the folks out towards Lawrence and the Douglas County area just a little bit of a heads up. 731 right now, you're watching live coverage here at Fox 4 of the tornado warning that's in effect for areas especially north of downtown Kansas City. Here's John. Just a couple of things, Joe, of note. Uh, KCI Airport now reporting flights are diverting, some are holding, um, and some are still inbound. Obviously, they are going to be keeping a really close eye on this weather. Also, our Dave DeMarco is uh, in Douglas County, it would appear, and he is reporting some damage. Uh, this would be, let's see if I can find that uh, location in Douglas County that he was reporting from. Um, there was some damage in Douglas County. Obviously, we've heard a number of reports of damage over in the Lawrence area. Reports, uh, here it is, 1900 block of North 1400 and East 1900. Those are county roads in Douglas County. This is near Pleasant Grove. Significant damage. Homes destroyed. This is per uh, Dave DeMarco and photojournalist Ken Price. They're in that area and that is according to Douglas County Emergency Management as well. Homes and power lines we saw earlier down when, when Michelle was in that area as well. So those are some of the early damage reports. The important thing to note right now, Joe, 
We've had no reports, although again, it's early, of any fatalities or injuries. But again, it's er early in the evening as early people emerge evening. and people get to right. these locations. That's when we'll begin to learn more about the status of people. Okay. Um, okay, we're taking a look now up towards, uh, what was that? I-29 and Barry Road, taking a look up towards the north where there is a ton of rain falling right now. And to our knowledge, at least at this point, okay, that's about the worst of it. It looks like, as I'm taking a look over Gary's shoulder, that the circulation has weakened considerably. Again, I don't want to let our guard down at this point in time, all right, but it does look like the circulation has uh, weakened considerably as this thing has moved into Platte County. Now, I want to show you something uh, on Weather One, all right? I wanted to circle the community of Smithville. Now, you're saying to yourself, why am I circling the community of Smithville, okay? We are getting reports on my Twitter feed uh, from Mike Murphy that there is literally pieces of debris, papers, things flying into the cornfields around the Smithville area. All right, so imagine this. Here's Smithville. We believe the tornado lifted somewhere in Wyandotte County. We don't believe there was actually a tornado on the ground in Platte County. But look at the distance all right, from where the tornado lifted how it brought up all that debris into the tornadic circulation, and then it's depositing some of that debris dozens of miles away in the Smithville area. We have seen this happen before. All right, back in early 2000, you know, 2003, we saw these reports of debris lofted within these storms and transported dozens of miles away from the actual path of damage. And that just tells you what a violent storm we're dealing with as we head up towards uh, this particular cell and as we look at the storm coming out of Platte County. Carly, can you help me out now with this um, because mm -hmm. I want to make sure we have our graphics correct. Right. Is there still a tornado warning in effect? There is still a tornado warning in effect. Okay. It lasts for another 25 minutes and it's for those in Platte County, Clay County, portions of Wyandotte County, but I suspect that'll probably get dropped here shortly. It's, um, it goes until, as I mentioned, 8 o'clock, so we have another 25 minutes for this tornado warning. At the moment, there is no tornado on the ground that we have had confirmation on. However, we are suspecting that this tornado warned storm is not done yet. We suspect that there is a possibility it could spin up again another tornado. So we're watching areas right along that leading edge of the thunderstorms moving over North Oak Traffic Way right now, moving over Tiffany Springs Parkway. This is 169, 152. There's a big uh, medical facility right here just north of 152 that's going to be right underneath the area of potential rotation, and that's going to be a spot near 96th Street, near 152, North Oak Traffic Way, the 169 corridor. This is also down towards Berry Road. This is one of the spots that we're watching right now. There is not a confirmed tornado on the ground, but we are seeing the possibility of maybe some broader rotation again showing up in that location. Also moving off to the east. I'm a little concerned, Joe, as this now evolves, perhaps over the next 30 minutes to an hour. We're going to be watching these little notches in here. See this little notch, this little inflow just outside of 169 near North Oak Traffic Way and 152. There's not a t tornado confirmed on the ground right now, but it doesn't mean we're not going to see this happen again. If you're in Liberty right now, if you're in Gladstone right now, if you live right along 152 and 435, this is going to be approaching your city. If you're near 291 and 435, uh, 291 as well as 35, that interchange, it's going to be very, very close to your location on the north side of the metro. We're talking in and around Gladstone, North Kansas City, and it's going to be pushing off to the east. The problem we're going to run into, see the reds on radar, that's very heavy rain lots of lightning and what I'm a little concerned about is this little area that's starting to notch out again here moving along 152 and Indiana Avenue just to the west of 435 and just to the west of Brighton Avenue it's racing off to the east at about 30 miles per hour um, I'm not getting uh, reports uh, we're asking right now actually Joe thank you for that asking if we're going to continue the tornado warning right now I'm not getting any confirmed reports of a tornado but those of you in Shoal Creek at about 741 near Shoal Creek Parkway this would be moving near your location 
and this is going to continue to race off to the east at about 30. Maybe we want to expand or widen out the view just a little bit after you do this track, Gary. And so we can get a couple more cities on the path of it in front of this. So if you're in Lake Wacomus, it's pouring. Houston Lake, it's pouring. You're going to see conditions improving here shortly. But if you're in Clay Como, 741. Liberty, 747. Missouri City, 8 o'clock. Same for those of you in Mosby, just outside of Excelsior Springs. And right along this leading edge, we're going to be watching for maybe a little bit more additional rotation. This is that uh, same cell, the supercell that just started down near Lone Star, Kansas, just outside south and west of Lawrence. It moved through the south side of Lawrence. It moved through Wakarusa. It continued towards the town of Linwood. It continued towards Bonner Springs. It continued to cross over I-70 near the Legends. It's now making its way through the north side of Kansas City's 435 loop. And as we look at the velocity scans, what we're looking for here are little couplets of red and green tight next to each other where there may be some rotation. If you're along 435, if you are east of 435, get into your safe spot. This is 435 and Berry Road we're talking about near uh, Berry Road and let's see, what is that? Maplewood, Maplewood's. Yeah, is that near Maplewoods Parkway? Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Gary. Um, Gary Frank running radar for me in the back here. So we're going to keep an eye on things. Okay, so they did, here's a little bit of good news. They did cancel the tornado warning for Wyandotte County, actually, now. They did cancel the tornado warning for Clay and Platte counties. But we're also keeping a very close eye on this uh, thunderstorm as it continues racing off to the north and east. And, Joe, I'm reading the reports yeah. now. South of Plattsburgh, they're also getting large debris falling from the sky south of Plattsburgh. All right, so Rob, do me a favor. You could drop that tornado warning. Okay, the tornado warning now has been canceled. I want to make sure I've got all my ducks in a row on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the tornado warning has been canceled. We are now looking at severe thunderstorm warnings with what we call a tag, and that tag is basically means that a tornado is possible. But as we look at radar right now, we're getting some better indications as Carly was talking about just a couple of minutes ago, that this storm may be in the process of evolving into something different. Hopefully that something different is maybe just a little bit of wind and perhaps some hail. Although interestingly, and I know Carly wants to pick it up from no, here. No, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm okay. Uh, interestingly, we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen hail reports. Haven't seen any, um, I, I need to watch my phrasing. We've seen damaging winds, obviously, with the tornadic circulation, but we haven't seen winds rushing out of any of these other thunderstorms mm -hmm. creating damage either. I'm getting reports from the Johnson County, Kansas area of some kind of spooky looking clouds. Uh, what we refer to them as our SLCs, scary looking clouds, but obviously everybody is in a very um, heightened state with the devastation that we have seen around parts of the metro from the tornado that occurred earlier about an hour ago, if not maybe a little less than that. So. Obviously, everybody is very weather sensitive right now and they look up or look out or whatever and they're seeing all sorts of things spinning around and stuff like that. This is the main show right now that we're most concerned about. And again, we have indications that there is not a tornado on the ground at this point. Doesn't mean that it won't change. All right. But at least at this point, we're not getting any indications that there's a tornado on the ground. And again, as you have these big, massive supercell thunderstorms coming through a metropolitan area, even though they're wrapped up in rain sometimes, like what we've seen with this particular uh, storm system, you would think that we would be getting bigger reports or something uh, perhaps more destructive coming in from various parts of uh, Kansas City. And thankfully, so far, we have not. That does not, by any stretch of the imagination, minimize what has happened already for tonight. If you're just joining us, it's 741 right now. We've seen devastating tornadoes in parts of our viewing area. Let's get it over to Carly. Well, I'm just going to ask our producer Rob Zerwick if he can go on my Facebook page to the visitor post. And I have a post from Samantha Jolly with debris falling, a video of debris falling in Camden Point, Missouri. So that is nowhere near where the warning and the tornado happened. But there is debris falling in Camden Point, Missouri. So we're going to try to get that working. Uh, what I suspect is going to happen as we watch this now cycle, and Gary, you mm -hmm. and I were just chatting about this last Friday night. We had a line of thunderstorms blowing through, and along the leading edge, we had these little quick spin-ups. And it looks like this, I'm hoping that's what it's kind of transitioning into, but that's why they're continuing the severe thunderstorm warning 
with the possibility of a quick spin up or a tornado redeveloping. Mm. What I was going to say, and that's, that's why we're looking at those velocity scans that we talked about for a while when it was weakening just a little bit. Now it's at least strengthening to some degree, and of course it's on the north side of Liberty, and we talk about uh, the symmetry with the last time we had a tornado event in, in the area in 2003. Yeah. 2003. Uh, fortunately, uh, William Jewell is just a little bit more, uh, at least on the... I would expect on the northeast side there, but this is still an area we're watching across 152 and with the in intersection of 435 as well. So that is, as I mentioned, we tracked that into Shoal mm -hmm. Creek and Shoal Creek Parkway. Yep. That's right at that intersection, uh, right there, just before you start to get uh, to that light down to Shoal Creek Parkway. And I would say that's going to be within the next two minutes before that gets at least on the north side of Liberty. Uh, between Kearney and Liberty there uh, on Lightburn. So that's on the north side of Liberty. Now there's obviously, we mentioned there's, there's no that tornado, video. But there's the video that you were mentioning. That's from Samantha Jolly in Camden Point. And you can see there's debris falling from the sky in her video right there. See that just falling out of the sky. That is just fascinating. John Holt, you have some new information uh, for us. Let's go to him at the anchor yeah, desk with Dominique. A bit of good news coming out of Lawrence right now is Lawrence police are tweeting um, that most of the structural damage, of course, this supercell began just south of Lawrence, as you mentioned. Uh, the, the, most of the damage is south of Lawrence. It did not pass through the city itself. Uh, but Lawrence police do say there are a number of power lines and tree limbs down. They're urging folks in Lawrence not to sightsee. They don't need that kind of help. Douglas County and Lawrence police are dealing with this right now. But the good news, the damage appears to be outside the city of Lawrence. At one point, our meteorologists were talking about the potential for Lawrence taking a direct hit, but it appears to have passed just south. Not to say that there aren't people affected, there are homes, some rural areas there. We're hearing about damage in Douglas County. Our Dave DeMarco has just sent back some pictures, and we'll try to share those with you as well, of homes that were damaged south of Lawrence in Douglas County. But again, Lawrence itself appears to have been spared the worst. The other good news, I mentioned this to Joe and, and you as well, Carly, uh, no reports of any injuries or fatalities yet. That's again, we're early in the process, but at least out of Douglas County, that's the case, Joe. Yeah, we'll be counting our prayers, right? If we could get through Lawrence and Linwood and Bonner Springs uh, without injuries or loss of life, it will be a little bit of a miracle because these tornadoes or this tornado uh, was, you know, about as bad as we'll see in this part of the country. Really, in all honesty, the only thing of noteworthiness right now is a severe thunderstorm warning. There are no tornado warnings right now in effect anywhere within our viewing area. And look at this. The severe thunderstorm warning now has been dropped. Go ahead and take that banner, if you please, off the screen. Thank you. Uh, so right now the tornado watch continues in effect up until about uh, 10 o'clock or so for tonight. It may get canceled or kind of eroded, if you will, a little early. Something that I have not really touched on all that much for around our area is the fact that we still have these heavy rain producing thunderstorms in the region. I do want to point out that for areas way out towards uh, north central Kansas, we do have a couple of strong storms up there that are moving up into southeastern Nebraska. But again, for the Kansas City area right at this second, we have a little bit of a breather, all right, a little bit of a stand down. If you are in a safe spot, whether it be in Platte County or Clay County, all right, you could probably start to venture out. I want you to be ready, especially if you live uh, in parts of Clay County, especially the eastern part of Clay County um, and points east and northeastward to get back into that safe spot if a brand new tornado warning comes out over the next uh, half hour to 45 minutes. But some indications that this long-lived supercell with a very bad tornado or couple of tornadoes uh, has shown some signs of weakening. We are seeing some other storms out there, and I want to bring our friends down in Cass County up to date. These are non-severe thunderstorms. I mean, you could tell the difference between what's going on in Harrisonville and what's going on between Liberty and just towards the west of Kearney, towards the west of 135, all right? You could tell these two storms are different animals, all right? And this storm, the good news is that storm is weakening. As we broaden, as we broaden out our view just a little bit more, there are some other strong storms out there, out towards central Kansas. Manhattan now going into a severe thunderstorm warning, and there's flooding rain still continuing up across northern Missouri. But around the Kansas City area, some of you have not had a drop of rain. I mean, it's, it's weird how sometimes these things happen, where you could see utter devastation 20, 25 miles away from you, 
and at your specific location, you don't even get a drop of rain. And again, this is the situation that we're watching near the I-35 corridor and points westward. I want to give the folks upstairs and perhaps a couple of people who might, might want to start thinking about this that will continue our coverage through at least 8 o'clock. We may stay on past that, but at least through 8 o'clock we're going to continue our coverage. And the reason why is because while we're not under a severe thunderstorm warning, we just remain under a tornado watch. I just want to still kind of watch this cell. This way we'll be with you on the air for at least another 15 minutes, and then we'll figure out what's going to happen up towards the Ray County area if that storm starts to intensify. But again, we still have some of these very strong thunderstorms that are out there. John, were you... Uh, Wanting to say something? Yeah, let's yeah, let, I want to take a live look now, uh, Joe. We have a first picture back from Douglas County. Uh, Dave DeMarco is just south of Lawrence. This is the scene there, and you see some of the structural damage there, power poles, homes. Uh, Dave says that uh, one of the buildings damaged. This is 8,000 customers, we're told now, without power. Uh, Rob, is that in Douglas County itself or just in general? Just a general number. Douglas County. Okay, so again, this is just south of Lawrence, and one of the buildings that was hit there uh, according to Dave DeMarco, who's on scene, it's a building block learning center. It's a daycare uh, in that uh, area. Again, just south of Lawrence. We mentioned earlier that Lawrence police had indicated that structural damage did not occur in the city itself. Uh, they do have a lot of trees, uh, big trees down, roads blocked, power lines, things like that. But the structural damage you're seeing there is south of uh, Lawrence uh, on county roads, unincorporated areas. Dave DeMarco is on scene and hopefully gathering information. No reports of any injuries at this point, but that's our first live look from Douglas County, the aftermath. Again, that supercell began, as Carly mentioned, uh, near Lone Star, just south and west of uh, Lawrence and moved north northeast, skirting just by the south part of Lawrence. Carly? Well, uh, we've been watching this evolution of this system and as we look at our velocity scans which we use as kind of an x-ray to the system because where we have a red and a green area very close to each other we call that a couplet and that indicates inflow and outflow from the radar site what we're watching right now is a little area of concern approaching i-35 just outside of the town of Kearney. Uh, Gary has been putting tracks on these systems for us throughout the night and this one the rotation again there's no warning right now guys but we're keeping an eye on it because that's one area along this leading edge of this latest round of storms blowing in now into Kearney or approaching I-35 in the town of Kearney. It would be getting there in the next four to five minutes. Those of you in Mosby, just outside of Excelsior Springs at 757, Crescent Lake at 803, 804 for Excelsior Springs. Again, there is no warning right now, but this is the leading edge of thunderstorms that we've been watching. And over the last couple of radar scans, it's just been a little more there's just something going on that's not setting well with us that we can't ignore in the last couple of radar scans. Keep in mind, there is no warning in place. There is no, oh, okay. I was gonna say. <laughs> well, there we go. Thank you for yeah. that, Gary. So uh, yeah, that's why we were watching that storm because it was yeah. very likely that we were gonna have some sort of rotation there. So this is near Liberty. This is going to be approaching Kearney moving east at 35 miles per hour. So I'm glad we had our eyeballs on that one, guys, because this is a tornado, now a tornado warning, about to cross over I-35. This is radar indicated, but we have a lot of people out chasing, a lot of eyeballs on this leading edge of thunderstorms. So this is just north of Liberty. If you're in the town of Liberty, you're probably hearing the sirens going off right now. This is going to be moving just along and just to the north of 291. It'll be moving I over I-35, just to the south of 92 through the town of Kearney. Kearney, take cover right now. There is a history of a violent tornado with this system, and it looks like it's trying to wrap up again as it crosses over I-35 near Kearney as it moves north and east at about 30 miles per hour. It's going to be in the town of Mosby in the next five to seven minutes. It's going to be in Crescent Lake around 803, 804 in Excelsior Springs. So if you're in the path of this, Please take cover immediately. A newly issued tornado warning. This one's going to go until 815, and that's due to a radar indicated rotation, which we were just talking about as the warning came out. So we've been tracking this tornado warning. It'll cross over Interstate 35. It'll cross to the north of Liberty. That's the location right there that we're most concerned about, near just outside of the 435 loop, just about to cross over uh, just to the south, actually, of 92. It might be moving over Missouri A, 
Route A right there as we speak, just to the south of 92. What was that, Rob? Okay, um, and it's gonna continue to cross over uh, the I-35 corridor, moving into the town of Kearney, moving very near 19th Street on the south side of Kearney, moving near 33. Guys, if you're in the path of this, here's a couple updated uh, locations. 757 for Kearney, and if it were to continue on, assuming it does, Mosby, Excelsior Springs, you wanna go ahead and start thinking now about your plan of action because this tornado warning will go for a little bit longer. It's a radar indicated tornado, but Lawson, 811, you're in the path of this potentially uh, dealing with some very strong winds if the rotation crosses near you or just south of the town of Lawson. But Kearney is the number one place I'm most concerned about right now. Also near the I-35 corridor, just outside of 291, there's another spot that we're watching as well uh, for radar indicated rotation just south of Kearney. And on the radar scans, these are what we're looking for now. Also, these little notches of inflow, that's another spot that might have some issues. We're also looking at video. Remind me where this video is, Rob, that's on the other side of our screen here, please. Okay, that's 291 and 35, which is basically where we're anticipating this potential tornado to be. And that is why they've issued this tornado warning for Clay County until 815. This is just north of Liberty. Joe? All right, so uh, 7.53 right now, we're going to continue our coverage through 9 o'clock. We're going to stay on, obviously, from 9 to 11. So we are basically going to be uh, just basically staying on up until at least 11 o'clock or so for this evening. And again, as Carly mentioned, these are the next little areas that we start to worry about out towards Clay County. Uh, there was just about a 10-ish, maybe 5, 10-minute little intermission, if you will, between tornado warnings, but this is the same cell, if memory serves, that was the cell that produced the destructive tornado uh, over on the Kansas side, especially. It went through a little lifestyle, life adjustment, if you will, what we call a cyclic supercell, and it may be trying to reorganize very close to the Kearney vicinity. So if you live near 92 Highway and southbound, especially southbound of 92, down 33, down Missouri 33, if you know somebody in a mobile home, something like that, make sure they get into a safe spot right now. There is not a report of a tornado on the ground. This is a radar indication that we've got a tornado possibly trying to form. And this type of indication was what gave us our heads up as we were looking at what happened previously out towards the uh, Douglas County area over towards and south of Lawrence and out towards Linwood and Bonner Springs and stuff like that. So uh, this storm heading towards Excelsior Springs by about 8.09, Lawson by about 8.15 or so, it's possible. I want you folks in Excelsior Springs to take cover from this storm. Likewise in Mosby, we'll see what happens. Uh, Carly mentioned that these things might attempt to create at least perhaps for the next few minutes, these little brief little spin-ups like what we saw just a couple of nights ago on Friday night. Uh, you can get some enhanced Thanks, wind damage, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds. And the bottom line really is that regardless of whether it's a strong thunderstorm wind or a tornadic wind, as I talk about time after time after time, damage is damage is damage. Now we've gotten reports from the Smithville area of a lot of debris coming down from the sky. All right, that's from the tornado that occurred earlier out towards Linwood and around Bonner Springs and out towards the Lawrence vicinity. All right, so that's how powerful these supercell thunderstorms were. We're taking a look now at Michelle Bogoliff's feed and let's go ahead and bring in Michelle. We haven't touched base with her in a little while. And Michelle, if you could hear me, why don't you go ahead and bring us up to date where you are? She cannot hear me. Okay, so do we know where she is? Nope, I can, I can hear oh, you. Okay, great. Michelle, it's I can all yours. Hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, guys, hey, we are on the north side of the metro. We had to just take a little mini break after the tornado warnings had dropped just to kind of recoup, gather our thoughts. And then I started seeing that storm rotating ever so slightly. So now we are back on it. Um, we are going to be coming off of 29 and headed up 35 here very, very soon. Um, so we are going to be coming in on the south side of this thing. And I know it's pushing off to the east at about, I think uh, you had mentioned 35 miles per hour or so. So as we continue to head in that direction, um, we'll, we'll definitely be bringing you updates um, if we do get eyes on a possible circulation, a possible tornado. Um, so for now, we are, are just trying to reroute and kind of head back off to the northeast 
of downtown. Back to you guys. Uh, I do want to report, we just had a, com a report coming in of a funnel cloud near 92 Highway in or near Kearney, um, but it dissipated, but the whole large rotating wall cloud remains. So it's very apparent that this storm has gone through a cycle and it's likely re-strengthening. Uh, Gary, you have some more for us. Well, I was just gonna say, you, we talked about the, the cycles of the storm mm -hmm. and earlier you were looking at that inflow mm -hmm. and that's why we show you the radar with the velocity in between and you yeah. talked about it being an X-ray. And that's kind of where that's at as it's at least crossing 35 or just mm -hmm. has, but still uh, from Kearney and Mosby in the path of this, even though Excelsior Springs